After what seemed like an eternity and nearly every out-of-work manager rejecting them, Tottenham have finally appointed a new manager in Nuno Espirito Santo. Now it came as a surprise that Nuno decided to leave a wolf size he'd brought up from the championship but he now has a massive rebuilding job on his hands here at Spurs so that's what we're going to do today Spurs fans. We're going to rebuild the squad, attempt to keep Harry Kane at the club and hopefully win the Champions League as well. Now if you do go on to enjoy this one please do leave the video a like it would really help with the algorithm and I just wanted to say a massive thank you for everyone watching this for 1000 subscribers for me it literally happened yesterday so it really hasn't sunk in yet but if you haven't already please do consider hitting subscribe. Subscribers, I guess we now move for 2k. But we'll now go through the rules I have set for my rebuilds. So the ultimate goal then is to win the Champions League. All games will be simulated except the Champions League final which I will play live with some live commentary and the rebuild ends as soon as we win the Champions League whether or not we've won any other competition. So now let's go and get a start on rebuilding this Spurs squad. Here he is then Nuno holding up that Spurs shirt now looking at his squad then of course there is Harry Kane and Youngmin Son up top but then there's a lot of things to be doing to this squad possibly need a new midfielder the bench just doesn't look good Sissoko still here how that man is still a footballer I do not know the rest of the squad there's a lot to get out there's a lot of youth that we can get loaning out there's a lot of deadwood like Danny Rose who needs to leave the club so we're going to do that we're going to start with the loans show some transfers outgoing so some transfers incoming and then see where we stand after the business it took a while to get a few offers in but we have now got three loans going George Mars to Wolfsburg for a year then we've got Dane Scarlett to Mansfield for two years which is going to be a good one then we've got Niall John as well to Livingston for two years another good one next up to leave on loan then is Dylan Maracandi who goes out to Ross County for two years and Marcel Lavenier also goes out on loan for two years to Finn Harps in Ireland this time and then Newcastle decided to come in for Joe Roden on loan and I thought actually it might be a good move for him so we accept it for a year once again we had a couple of loans to deal with so uh, Jerkin goes to Monterey for a year for sure then Tanganga, we've had an offer from Rangers, but also an offer from Wickham. So I'm going to accept them both. Hopefully he goes to one and gets some good game time under his belt and comes back stronger. And to end out our loans, Jamie Bowden goes out to Middlesbrough for a year. Our first permanent transfer out then is the liability that is Serge Aurier. He goes to buy in for around 20 million. Next up out the door then is Danny Rosen. For some reason, Juventus want him, but he goes for five and a half million to Turin. First signing we look to make then is a player that is linked with Spurs in real life, and that is Takirio Tomiyasu. I'm mean, then saying him on a five-year deal hopefully he grows well and becomes an important player for us and then for just over double Tomiyasu's fee we do strike a deal with Leicester for Ricardo Pereira as right back is a position we desperately need an improvement on so when he comes on a four-year deal third transfer and then we agree a 30 million deal for Bubakar Kamara the young CDM from Marseille and for 55 grand a week he comes in on a four-year deal I then noticed Morgan Gibbs White actually had a release clause for 8 million so we activated that signed him on a three-year deal and hopefully he becomes a good prospect for us and finally I felt I needed one more striker so right at the end of the window I went in for Santimina from Celta Vigo for 14 million and we signed a 24 year old striker on a three year deal and so here then is a look at the squad we're going to be using in this first season obviously you've got Kane and Son and Dombley Bale Pereira slots straight in as does Kamara the young 20 year old because quite frankly we're running quite a thin squad as this is it which is why as you can see I needed Mina but hopefully we're able to push for top four that's all I'm wanting this year is Champions League qualification so let's go and see how we're doing halfway through and so here we are in January in the league and things are actually going quite well second in the league three points ahead of City we are seven points behind Liverpool and they've only lost one game and drawn one game all season so it doesn't look like they're catchable but for us second place is good I wanted top four that's where we are that is the plan if we look at the bottom of the table just for interest Brighton West Brom and Sheffield United down for relegation at the moment and basically with no European football and no transfer business happening in this January it's time to go straight to the end of the season and well here we are then we have dropped down a place but we've managed to secure Champions League football which is what I wanted level on points with City so they got us on goal difference and we we're actually only three points behind Liverpool in the end which isn't too bad you know now in the Carabao Cup then we made it all the way to the final and were beaten 5-2 by Manchester City at Wembley. That is a little bit embarrassing. We'll check the FA Cup as well. And we didn't make it to the final. The final is Chelsea against Forest because Forest beat us 4-3 in the semis. How 
How did Forest do that? They beat West Brom as well. Well, that's a surprising turn of events. And what we'll do now then is have a quick look at our best performers this year. And that would, of course, be Mr. Harry Kane. To be expected, he's had a couple of injuries, but he still managed to get 33 goals. Ahead of Son with 24, Huberg got himself 15, Bale with 11, and Dombele with 11 as well. Pretty good before we get to the under 10 mark, which isn't really what we care about. Assist-wise then, it was led by Son just ahead of Ndombele and Kane there. And then seven from Huibe, he's had a great season, up four as well, but so is Ndombele up four. Absolutely brilliant growth from them too. And now it is time to get into season two then. We've got the Champions League football we wanted. So we need to make some big signings and try and solidify ourselves in the top of the league as well. And this then is a look at a squad basically right at the start of season two. So we're looking like we're going to need a new centre back for sure as these two are aren't up to scratch for the Premier League and a new right mid. I have got some players in mind and then when we come down here we have got a good bit of selling to do again. It's really going to be some loans, quite a few like last time. Transfers out, transfers in, let's do it. First loan out then is one Foyt out to Guangzhou in China for a year. A couple of loans at the same time then as Brandon Austin is going to Orlando for a year and then Joe Rodon is going to Brighton for a year and Harvey White also goes out for a year to Rotherham. Jamie Bowden then also goes out on loan to Coventry for a year and I've final loan is Alfie Whiteman out to Mudwell for two years. We then sold an aging Eric Lamella to Leicester for 14 and a half million and I thought that was a good deal for us. We then sold Musa Sissoko to West Ham for 3.8 million and our final sale then is Tracy out to Nick Haxa for 375,000. First incoming then is a massive statement signing from Nuno at Spurs and it is Serge Gnabry for 75 million and the former Arsenal youngster joins their local rivals in Tottenham Hotspur on a five year deal. Next up we sat down with Lopaguti at Sevilla to talk about Jules Kunde and we agreed on 45 million and then Kunde himself agreed on a five year deal on about 100 grand a week so we'll take that. So after two really big transfers I've gone for quite a small one then and for 3 million we have agreed a deal for Daryl DK and in comes the big American forward on a four year contract and we then sat down with Zinedine Zidane and we decided to break the bank on signing Rafael Varane from Real Madrid for 55 and a half million and the 28 year old should provide some vital experience at the back for us and shore up our defence going forward. And here we are looking at the squad then after all the transfer business has been done in season two. Nabri slots in on the right nice and easy. Varane and Kunde are the new partnership at the back. The bench is still looking quite good and then there's a few players we couldn't quite get rid of on loan like Clark and Parrot but other than that this squad looks really really good if you ask me and I'm thinking they can go quite far the Champions League possibly win it maybe the bench isn't good enough to win it but you never know let's go and find out how we're doing in January and here we are then 21 games in and we are 49 points in third and we are once again looking like we're not going to catch City who haven't even lost a game yet third is still pretty good still top four I just would like to be pushing towards the top of the table why are Sheffield Wednesday in the Premier League I don't know They've only got three points. They do not deserve to be here at all. But we still want Champions League football. And speaking of the Champions League, let's just see how we're doing. We are through to the round of 16 against Real Madrid. Not the best draw we could have got in the world. We did finish top of our group on goal difference ahead of AC Milan just about. But that still has not given us a favourable draw at all. And also while the transfer window was closed, I did do a little bit of business. So Jack Clark and Troy Parrott have both left on two-year loans to Celtic and Preston respectively. And Jack Rolls has gone to Sassuolo. 270k now let's see how the rest of this season goes and i'm not really very hopeful right okay then get a win there yes now starting away at madrid a 3-3 draw that's huge big couple of weeks as we've lost to arsenal there city in a carabao cup final again this time we win it first bit of silverware fantastic right three away goals we've got here come on let's get a good result and we're through that's fantastic. Straight past Madrid. Oh my god. Who's next then? It's PSG. It doesn't get any easier, does it? Away again, first leg. Draw 2-2 two, two this time. Okay, so in the home leg, what are we going to do this time? We are going to lose and we're out. Yep, yeah, okay. Really, it's just the FA Cup now. So that's against Chelsea here. That's the semi-final defeat to them. We were out of every other competition. Fantastic. And we're still losing to United on the last game. Southampton, come on, and we'll win it. Right, there's the end of the calendar sim. Let's see how we did. To win the league, then we are third, which is exactly where we were in January. And we were even further away from Liverpool and City, who did end up losing a game. So we'll start with the Carabao Cup, where we did win. We did actually win a trophy this year, despite the rest of the stuff not going too well. Beat Man City in the final. In the FA Cup, though, it's Chelsea versus Man City. And we went out to Chelsea 4-2 in the semis. And then on to the Champions League. PSG are actually in the final with Liverpool. We didn't make the semis. We did make the quarterfinals but we went out 4-2 
to Paris Saint-Germain. I'll just show you then the Spurs boys are really not very happy with me for not winning too much this year. The Carabao Cup obviously not meaning too much to them and maybe we can turn it around next year. Let's just check how the squad did though this season. So goals wise who else was it going to be up there other than Harry Kane with 35. Young Min Son though did well with 32 himself. Gnabry then it's a big jump to 14 and Domble with 12. Deli Ali even off the bench getting 10 is pretty good. Then we're down to the lads who got below 10. Assists again. Young Min Son wins it. And Domble then right behind him on 10. Pereira on 9. Kane only got 8 which isn't too great from him. He's normally better at linking up than that. Reggie on Nabry on 7. Hjoiberg on 5. So we need to improve next season. The Spurs board aren't too happy. I'm obviously going to do a bit of fiddling with PC mods to fix that, but season three needs to be a lot better, so let's get there. And well, we're at the start of season three and in a shock ton of events, they didn't sack me during the summer. So we will have a look at the squad as it is now. Most people are on international duty, which explains then why they're all quite tired. But look at this squad. I'm not even sure where I can improve it other than in goal. So I will be bringing in a new starting keeper. Daryl DK had a great year, by the way, growth wise last year. Dane Scarlett is also flying up as well. But other than that, this team looks really good. I'm hoping to go all the way this year. I'm hoping Champions League, maybe a Premier League, at least an FA Cup. But the Champions League is the main priority. And first to leave on loan then is Tanganga to West Ham for two years. Dylan McCandy then goes out on loan to Grimsby for two years as well. And then Dane Scarlett also goes out for another two years to Nottingham Forest this time. Dennis Zirkin also goes out to Birmingham for two years. Odin heads to Scotland for Dundee for two years. And Brandon Austin's going to join him there for those two years. And much like our first loan deal, our first actual transfer out is also to West Ham with Ben Davis going for 16.5 million. And we also struck a deal for Joe Rodan to go to Watford for 10.5 million. And we've absolutely smashed our transfer record with this signing we've agreed a hundred million pounds for Gianluigi Donnarumma in goal and the 23 year old shot stopper will sign on a five year deal and it's the final piece of the puzzle for our starting 11 and with the funds we have left then we also do a deal for Myron Baldu for 35 million from Wolves and the young striker comes in on a three year deal and a final bit of business then is to bring in Hermoso a centre back for 30 million and he'll hopefully provide good cover should we get any injuries and then here is a look at the squad for season three and it's unbelievable if you ask me it's absolutely unbelievable look how many players there are that are pushing everyone's over 85 couldn't they He's only gone down because he grabbed himself an injury this bench then is also rock studded we look for baldu to go up look at this squad we've even got 80s back here as well that aren't even playing it's amazing and if we're not at least making the champions league final this year I will be disappointed, so let's go and see what happens. Well then, here we are in January, and once again we are second, but it's a lot closer than normal this time. There's three of us on 50 points. City and United level, we just have the better goal difference, and we're only three points behind Liverpool. It's not too bad. There is a four-way title race on as of right now. That is mad in a champions league then we were in the group of death by the way so we've made it through as you can see we've got ac milan not the bad draw in the end but we had real madrid and roma in our group and we managed to win all of those games without conceding a goal that is what i'm talking about with this side we are so so good now I'm just going to get straight in to hopefully get into the Champions League final. Turns out I forgot to click record, but we have actually made it to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. We've got Barcelona. Here's hoping we can go through. We do, and it's Bayern in the semis. Semi-final against United in the FA Cup, and I'm pretty sure that's the semi-finals. That's a great result against Bayern. That's a 2-2 draw at home. This could be crucial. Absolutely massive, and we're through, and it's Inter Milan. That is relatively easy draw i think and you know what we've gone really well in the league here so how are we going to be able to win the league as well what we'll do is the first thing i'll do is i'll skip that fa cup final right we'll go straight to here and we've won the carabao cup can we win the league can we win the fa cup we've won the fa cup have we won the league we're in the champions league final big things are happening so as we know then we are in the champions league final but the question is how did the league go we know we won the fa cup and we know we've won the carabao cup so we'll just confirm it won the fa cup 3-0 nice and easy carabao cup we played watford and we won it 2-0 premier league though is the question yes oh my god come on that is, we're on for a quadruple. We're on for a quadruple in our third season at Spurs. Nuno Espirito Santo is an absolute wizard. What I'll do is I'll just check how the players did and we'll get into that Champions League final after that. Right, in terms of goals, then Harry Kane with one game left. Can, if he gets a couple of goals, he's got a goal every game. And even if he gets an assist, he makes double figures. Youngmin Son with 42 goals as well. That's amazing. Nabry with 15 is good. Joyberg with 13. And Domble is suspended by the looks of it for this final with 11. Lo Celso with 10 from the bench. 
Then there's a few more just under 10. Assist wise, Serge Gnabry actually wins it this year. For the first time, it's not Young Min Son with 20 assists. Son still got 13. Pereira with 9. Joibek with 9. There's 5 or 6 people on 9 there. Wow. And there's still a game to go for these lot as well. So we'll see what it is. They've done really well but it is now time to get into the squad this then is the team for the champions league final ali's gonna have to start in place of ndomble who is of course suspended as i mentioned which also means harry winks then is going to make the bench just made that change this starting 11 is absolutely fantastic ali at 85 is the lowest rated and he doesn't even start normally so that would mean kamara would be the lowest rated it's absolutely fantastic this team is ready to win a champions league but we are here at Tottenham. By Tottenham, it's the history of the Tottenham. But as Galini says, they have a history of bottling finals to Tottenham, so we will have to go and find out and hope that we don't bottle it here. This looks like a really good inter side. They've still got Lukaku, they've got Pogba in it. It's going to be difficult, we know that. It's actually at the San Siro. Let's get into it. Well, here it is then, a Champions League final for Tottenham. Now, they've been here before when they lost against Liverpool, but can we manage to turn out a different outcome today and lift that trophy there with the navy and white ribbon? on it. Nuno's done a great job getting them here. They're beating a couple of big teams like Barcelona, like Bayern Munich. Inter have had a pretty easy run all considered apart from PSG. But it's time to get into this final. Spurs have got to do something here. It's their time. Quadruple is on the line. Let's get it. Deli Ali, can we link up with Harry Kane? Yes. Turn. Shot. From distance. Good save for Danovic. Good start from Nuno Spurs here. Wilfred Zaha are into here now. Can Varane get back at him? He's gone down very easily. Bit of a dive from Wilfred Zaha there. Serge Gnabry, Bubaga Kamara. Quick one to Deli Ali. First touch. Oh, needed a better shot and he might have scored. Barella over the top and it looks like Hakimi's in behind here. Reguillon's got to get back fast. Gets a foot on it and does well. Serge Gnabry here running away from Paul Pogba. Is this his route out of Manchester United? We'll never know, but that's a good challenge from him. And at half time, then as the ref blows whistle, it's nil nil. It's been pretty much all Spurs here. They just need to get themselves a goal in the second half and probably wrap this game up. Barella in a bit of space on the edge of the box here. Jules Kunde's come out and not got a foot in. Barella in space now. Kamara's not got there. That's the first shot for Inter, but Donnarumma holds easily. This has been a much better half from Inter now. They've been able to keep the ball very well, but Spurs' is defending has been resolute. Deli Ali trying to influence stuff now, finding Young Min Son out wide. He's looking to come inside his man and he's done really well. Son from the edge of the box is blocked very well. First corner of the second half really is whipped in by Son. Jules Kunde is up. He's going to fall for Judge Nabry and he's going to finish it off. There's been nothing in the second half for Tottenham as Inter have done really well. But Nabry finally gets the breakthrough with 20 minutes to go. The Spurs lead 1-0. Inter really needs to look at getting this ball forward now. There's about 10 minutes left and Lukaku's barely even had a touch this game. Lazaro on the ball for Inter now going past Schoeberg. Falls into Lukaku. Back to Lazaro but Varane steps through. Deli Ali then looking to find Serge Gnabry, the former Arsenal man who looks to have won the Champions League for Tottenham here. As there goes the final whistle and Spurs win an uneventful. Champions League final, 1-0, but it doesn't matter how you win it, as long as you win it. And Harry Kane has finally got that trophy he has longed for all his career. And he's actually managed to do it at Spurs. And it's slightly fitted in the way that it fell to former Arsenal youngster Serge Gnabry to win this final for Tottenham. But Harry Kane doesn't care as he lifts the Champions League for Tottenham Hotspur here at the San Siro. They beat an Inter Milan in their own backyard and they lift the Champions League trophy for the first time in their history. And what a historic season it has been for this club, winning everything, everything that was on offer to them, they have won. What a squad that Nuno built here at Tottenham and what a fantastic rebuild this was and it only took us three seasons to win it all. Now I am gonna leave you here watching the celebrations. If you did enjoy this rebuild for me, please do leave it a like, subscribe to the channel of course, let me know in the comments what other rebuilds you'd like to see from me. If you want to keep up to date with other videos of course, do please follow me on Twitter, it is in the description. But that is everything from me, I will see you all in the next one.